Here's the deal. Poison ivy is caused... It's face, uh, mostly, and that's... Uh, well, yeah, that's, that's well. awful. The, the, uh, the itching and the rash that's caused by poison ivy is initiated by a resin, like a sticky substance that's secreted by the poison ivy leaf. It's a defense mechanism for the plant. So a couple things right. you want to do. Once, the, once the, the resin is on the skin, the last thing you ever want to do is wash it or spread it or itch it or scratch in any way, because then it just... It kind of travels all over your body, especially if you get it on your face. That could be really miserable. So you got to with, it's easier said than done, of course, but you got to with, uh, resist the urge to scratch and don't try to wash it off with water or with soap because that's going to spread it. If you want to get rid of it, use acetone, alcohol, or even kerosene or turpentine, as toxic as that stuff is, it will, it will dissolve the uh, vitamin, the, the, um, the uh, poison ivy resin, some kind of solvent, and it usually has to be a nasty solvent. Uh, alcohol might work. Um, and the best kind, the best solvent is going to be acetone if you can find that, but that's not really great for your skin. And certainly turpentine or kerosene or even gasoline, that kind of stuff is awful for your skin. It's awful for your health. It's awful for everything, but it does dissolve uh, the poison ivy resin. I'm not advocating it, but I'm just telling you that is one of the effects it will have. In lieu of that, use zinc oxide to keep the itching down. Get yourself, uh, uh, that's what we were talking about earlier in the program, calamine lotion, which is not zinc oxide. It's actually zinc silicate. That can also help between zinc oxide and zinc silicate or calamine lotion. Those are your two best non-toxic topical strategies. Strategies. You can also use something called Benacort, which is a, a drug, so it's got a little toxicity, not a lot, but a little bit. Uh, you get that at a drugstore. Benacort stands for Benadryl and Cortisone, and it's a combination of Benadryl, for, which, which has an antihistamine property, and Cortisone, which has an immune suppressant property, both of which will relieve the itching and the rash, but they are drugs, so you've got to be careful. So. If you want to dissolve it, use acetone or, or some kind of um, some kind of uh, petrolatum solvent, petroleum-based solvent. You can use mineral oil too, by the way. That's not quite as toxic as gasoline or kerosene. That might work. In fact, any oil. Now, what about think about bleach? Well, bleach? no, no, I wouldn't use bleach because it's not a toxicity. Bleach is more for killing things. This is a resin, right. a sticky resin. Bleach may have a little bit of a solvent effect, but it's it's just as bad for your skin as as these other solvents I was talking about. Solvency, dissolving right. dissolving yeah. things is a is a dangerous strategy. But if your kid is absolutely miserable, you know you you got to wait. You know, the, the, take the better of two evils, the the light, the lesser of two evils, and that's a decision you'll have to make. Personally, I would be using some kind of oil like mineral oil, and then uh, zinc oxide or calamine lotion. Okay? All right. Thanks. Thank you, buddy. Be good. Have a great day, Dar uh, Dwayne. Thanks for calling. Daryl in Texas. What's up, buddy? How you doing? Daryl, going once, going twice. Daryl, where are you, Hello? man? Hey, Daryl. Uh, it's Gerald. I'm in Oh, Texas. I'm sorry. Okay, Gerald. Yes, sir. What's up, Dar uh, Gerald? Uh, I was calling to tell you real quick, um, uh, like, I've struggled with heavy drinking throughout my life, and I'm, I'm 42. Um, I pretty much started got, getting sober in 2011. I developed type 2 diabetes. Okay. Um, uh, and, you know, I've been, and for the first six months, I uh, um, I controlled it real well with insulin and, and you know, a blood sugar meter and, and lots of exercise. I do construction. and um, uh, But then I quit that in six months, and for the next six months, I completely control it with Beyond Tangy Tangerine exercise. And, you know, I've done a lot of cleansing throughout my life, a lot of raw cleanses and just, you know, stuff like that. And so, it, um, but here's my real question. Um, I, I don't drink anymore at all now. And i I doing the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, Bentofiamine, Sweet Ease, uh, okay, extra so chromium. I'm going to run out of time here. Tell me how I can help you. Okay. Um, the thing is, it's affected my vision. I want to know how I can really heal my vision. Okay. So your diabetes is not under control. That's the problem. If it's affecting your vision. Yeah. And that is one of the first things that will happen because the blood vessels in the eyes are very, very tiny. And diabetes, uh, one of the major effects of diabetes is destruction of blood vessels, especially tiny ones. That's why diabetes is a leading cause of blindness. So your diabetes is not under control. It's very good that you're on the Sweeties and Benfotiamin and all these other supplements. That's awesome. And you also want to throw in some zinc for sure. 
Uh, but as long as you're putting things in the body that spike your blood sugar, you're going to be sort of like bailing water out of a leaky boat. The supplements are like bailing water, but as long as you have a leak in the boat, you're not going anywhere. You may not be sinking, but you're not going to be going right. anywhere. So we got to take care of the leak, and the leak is the food. So focus on the foods you're eating and also focus on the integrity of the uh, intestine, the digestive tract, the strength and the the, uh, uh, the barrier properties of the digestive tract. The, the more broken down your digestive tract is, and which occurs over time, uh, the more likely sugar is going to be to get into the blood and mess things up. So first and foremost, you want to eliminate uh, any foods that spike blood sugar, and that includes oatmeal and cereal and, and rice and potatoes and sweet potatoes. I had a gal on a couple weeks ago, and she said she didn't eat any sugar, but she only ate sweet potatoes. So you got you to gotta kind of zoom into uh, where the problems are when it comes to your eating behaviors, because sometimes they're hidden. Sometimes we think a food is good, but it turns into sugar, and it'll mess up our diabetes. It's not that there's, of course, there's great things in sweet potatoes. I'm not saying to avoid them entirely, but you want to be respectful of the kind of foods you're eating that spike blood sugar. Here's the key, and I'll tell you in a second how you can use di some digestive strategies, but here's the key to diabetes. It's an eating disorder, people. I'm not just talking to uh, Gerald. I'm talking to everybody out there. It's voluntary. Diabetes is voluntary. Is this bad news? Am I, am I being mean to you guys? No. It's good news. It's great news because it means we're in control. Nobody has diabetes. You have to, you have to be diabetes-ing. It's a verb. Does that make sense, Gerald? It's something you do over yeah, and over again. Yeah. It's not like you have diabetes. It's something that you're doing. You don't have running. You're running. It's a verb. So how do you, how do you eliminate running? You stop running. How do you eliminate diabetes-ing? You stop diabetes-ing. That means spiking your blood sugar and your insulin with food. Stay off of the, those kinds of foods. If you're having a problem, and a lot of us are having problems, weaning ourselves off of those kinds of foods, use more protein. Use more fat, especially coconut oil or any kind of good fat. Butter is also a good fat. Use more spices, especially cinnamon. You can also use herbs. There's a wonderful herb called fenugreek, which has great anti-diabetic properties. Use your fucoidin Z and Z radical, which also has uh, digestive health benefits and it also has uh, benefits for blood sugar and um, uh, also uh, support digestive health and wellness with the biolumin nightly essence, which can also be helpful for blood sugar. So use some more supplementation. Don't forget the zinc, by the way, 50 milligrams of zinc, and focus on problem foods is most important, foods that spike your blood sugar. I want to get one more phone call in, bro. I hope I helped you, Gerald. I'm going to move on, okay? Thank you so much, man. Uh, Mario, Paisan, I was going to get you, but we're out of time, and I apologize. Uh, call me back tomorrow, Mario. I'll get you first up. And if we left you on hold, I apologize. Call back tomorrow. Tell our call screener that you were on hold and didn't get on, and we'll get you first up tomorrow on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll continue talking about zinc and prostate health and vitamin C, and we'll tell you about the link between vitamin C and zinc and prostaglandins. There's a very important connection there. Prostaglandin deficiency, of course, is associated with all kinds of degenerative diseases, especially autoimmunity. If you're in Olean, New York, or in upstate New York, I should say, please come by the Century Manor Grill House, Tuesday, October 21st, 7 to 9 p.m. Call Jonathan Smith, 646-258-0148. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening, folks. Have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now.